Well, how's it going, Mosaic? Adam here in Dearborn, and I got a little heat a couple of uh, uh, videos ago when I had my Michigan State sweatshirt on, uh, so I just want to represent North Carolina here. So uh, I just want to tell you a story. When we first moved into our house here in Dearborn, uh, we, we moved in the middle of the summer. We had a whole crew from Mosaic that helped us move in. It was awesome, but it didn't take long. That particular day moving stuff, and it was so hot, and we realized that the previous owners did not tell us that the AC was broken. And so here we are in the middle of summer and we're moving everything in. We realize there's no AC and it was hot. It was hot that summer. And it was a, maybe just a, a few days into it that, that finally Krista said, we need to get an AC unit. We need to get some fans. We need something to circulate some air in here. So I went to, to Home Depot, I went to Lowe's, but I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find nothing because at that point it was too late. Everything had already been balled up. And one of the things that really hit me in that moment was we can't wait too long. When the heat is coming, we can't wait too long. So a little while back, Ms. Roberta sent out a, a message to uh, a group of leaders from Mosaic. And it was a, a devotional thought that she had read earlier that day. Uh, but the devotional thought kind of surrounded around this one simple statement of what inspires us to combat evil. Now, she sent an article along with that, and the message was, uh, the article was about this, this statue that was dedicated to fighting violence and injustice. But it made me wonder, even for our own hearts, what do I do to combat the evil that's in my heart? So one thing I know is this, just like the AC, we cannot wait too long. We must be willing to fight and have a plan now. So what are some ways that we can combat evil and temptation and sin in our hearts? So just a few things here. First of all, I think we have to identify the times that we are weak, the times that we are more susceptible to believing things that are not true, looking at things that are unhealthy, or harboring anger for people that have hurt us. Whatever we may be tempted with, we have to recognize what those times are. And then as Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 2, we have to come back and remember who we are. This is a very important phrase to our family. My father-in-law first heard this phrase in a, in a sermon that really just changed the whole trajectory of his heart, even at an older age. And now for our family and for our kids, we start off each day remembering who we are. Paul writes it like this in Ephesians chapter 2. He says, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following the desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were nature, we were by nature deserving wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. So when you find yourself on the internet and you're going into places that you're not supposed to be, remember who you are. When you find yourself consumed with your job and, and more importantly, the successes and failures of your job, reflect on the fact that you are child of God. When you hear someone has insulted you behind your back and you want to get angry, remember who you are. When you find yourself so easily overwhelmed with the things that you cannot control and life just feels too big and you just want to give up, remember who you are. So not only that, we also have to be willing to run as fast as we can away from those things that tempt us. Those people, those situations that could bring us down. Paul writes it like this in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. He says, No temptation is overtaking you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will allow you to be who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make a way to escape that you might be able to bear it. We have to recognize what are those situations that are just unhealthy for us. And we have to distance ourselves more than six feet from those things. And the last thing I want to focus on is we have to be willing to put our trust in God. It's not just enough to, to recognize what are those things that, that tempt us. And it's not just enough to run away from. We have to run into something. We have to run into God. We have to run into him and his word. Uh, the book of Psalms writes it like this. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all of my heart. 
Do not stray me. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Guys, just like summer, the heat is coming. Let's have a plan. Let's not get caught in the heat of sin. Let's work now to prepare to take on this temptation and sin. Let us put together a plan to combat the evil around us and the evils in our hearts. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you provide not only a way for us to to get out of temptation, but you give us wisdom to know what are those things that we are doing, believing, um, and thinking that are not of you. I pray, God, that instead we will replace those things, those people, those situations with your word, the word of truth. May we not get caught out in the summer heat with no fan and no AC. May we prepare now to take on those things. We love you, God, that we can only do those things because you have promised to do them in us and for us and through us, Lord. So help us, we ask these things in your name, the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, thank you, guys. Enjoy that summer heat.